is exactly what I need to hype me up for making that carbon fiber platinum. I mean, look how big these strands are. Look at all this work. It's gorgeous. Look at all that carbon goodness. So these are our four molds for the carbon fiber intake we're going to make for the Z. Air is going to come in here, be funneled up to a coupler here, which is going to attach here on the air box. It's going to have an inline cone filter in it. Air is going to travel through here to a velocity stack, which is currently on the car, which will then feed into this three and a half inch pipe back here. Go through the throttle body here, into the intake, and then into the lower manifold. So unfortunately, each one of these molds is going to be sacrificed to make our parts, so we're only really going to get one shot at this. I've got all of them painted in a heavy filler primer that's been sanded smooth, so I mean it's almost as smooth as glass. All our carbon fiber parts have just arrived in the mail, so we're going to box those in a moment. And if anyone's wondering how I'm going to make a straight Z-tube, what I've done here is I took a three-foot section of PVC pipe, Filled it with an expanding foam, the same one I used to make the molds. Cut it into three pieces. It's then taped together on the end, so whenever I'm done making them, all I have to do is push the foam out. It'll come out the other end, and then once there's nothing in the middle holding this shape together, I can then pop each piece out individually and slide them out of the tube. So while the other molds will probably be destroyed in this process, I'm going to try and save them, but they're probably going to die. This one I can repeat and I can make z dozens of Z-tubes with this single piece. Stage 1 consists of PVA release and a mold release wax. Together, these two will ensure that the parts and the mold separate cleanly and prevent what could be an enormous headache on the back end of the process. They're cheap and simple, there's no reason not to use them. The second is the actual materials themselves. We have a 5.7 ounce 2x2 two two twill weave of carbon fiber, an expandable tube of carbon fiber, and a two-part epoxy resin. Epoxy resin is essential for maximum strength and minimum weight. Polyester resin is basically worthless. A detail that's nice to notice from my manufacturer here is that the roll has masking tape on the end to prevent frays it has a stitch line on the linear yard here, and then again masking tape to avoid frays. Small details like this show that you're buying from a good manufacturer. Our third and final part is the materials used in a vacuum bagging process. In the center there we have a vacuum pump. In the back we have an infusion media material which allows the resin to spread during the infusion process. In the middle we have the peel ply which goes directly against the carbon fiber itself and prevents any of the bagging material from sticking to the part. The fleece cloth over to the left is a breather ply. It absorbs some of the excess resin while helping air to flow out of the vacuum bag and through the pump. The green material in front is the vacuum bag itself that seals off the atmosphere from the part. And to the right is a special type of gooey tape that seals off the bag to whatever backing you're using. Similar to the step one, all of these things are cheap and readily available. Really, the main cost is in your fabric itself and the epoxy resin. So that covers all the materials we're going to use in this process and how the molds themselves will be used. If you missed part one, I'll throw a link up here so you can go check that out. Next time, we'll get to the fun part of actually making the parts. So you're not going to want to miss that. So hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys next week.